Meghan Markle is launching a new shop, American Riviera Orchard, to sell cookbooks, jellies, and nutty butters <laughs> made by the Duchess herself. Is it true or is it false? Look, let's face it, Meghan, you know, she's one of my heroines. So... <laughs> <laughs> Well, she makes you want to take what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm afraid that. I don't know which white power I'm on today. But no, but seriously, though, I mean, she's doing... It, what was worrying about this whole thing was that actually she did all this promotion just before... Uh, well, what did she do just before? Something to do with Kate? Oh, I yes, absolutely. So you think she's trying to overshadow Kate's illness? A absolutely right, and that, that's the problem. And obviously Kate is in hiding at the moment. And the, the, the poor girl, you know, should be left alone. She's gone through a very serious operation. And guess who the opportunist is? Meghan Markle. It reminds me, one of the biggest things I ever did on my YouTube channel was when I said that Meghan Markle was jealous of Princess Charlotte. Because literally, it was Charlotte's something like eighth birthday and Meghan decided to release a load of photos. You thought, you imagine her sort of angrily, you know, yeah, in she, her castle. She's, she's got a track record for this, hasn't she? Yeah. She's doing it all the time. And I, I think she's employed a new PR agent in this country, apparently that handled various things, uh, that very top flight stars and things. So where they're getting the money from? Because they haven't got anything with uh, various things like... Oh, I don't know. They made a few quid, though, Howard. Well, I mean, well, all the stuff bombed, but they still got paid. It's a shame, though, isn't it, that Meghan Markle has successfully persuaded the whole world that Britain's very racist. Yeah, I think that's a huge travesty. I don't think she has, first of all. Oh, hasn't she? No, I don't think she's convinced the whole world. I spend a lot of time in the States, uh, and I think there, like here, uh, lots of people love British people. I think the thing about Britain is that it's a warm, welcoming, tolerant, uh, enlightened society, and look, consistently polls have shown that. Without sounding all like I'm going to just talk about polls, people are really warm and welcoming. Obviously, people have some questions about certain things like borders and all that. But the idea that we'd be painted as this nasty group of people, mad, bad and dangerous, is it's a reflection, actually, of the contempt that the elite, the elite have for us. In America, most people love British people and the idea of Britain. Obviously, their whole history and ours is intertwined. Intertwined, of course yeah. it is. You know, yeah. And also, many people talk about America. And this is the thing about modernity. They talk about the Americans as though they're all, um, like, overweight and toxic and nasty and... But actually, what it reflects is a sense of disgust with ourselves, of, the th of our achievements. So I think that we should pay less attention to those people, the elite, who really hate people and actually are the new racists yes. that want to look at everything as though it's race, that actually mm. talk about people as though we're a subclass. They talk about ordinary people as a nasty, as though there's Nazis do you know, do, you know, do you know my theory on this? My theory is, and I think this is true in America as well, I think this goes back to 1066, the Battle of Hastings and the Norman Conquest, that actually the British elite, and I think the American elite, see everything that's continental European as better than anything that's British or anything that's American. And, and I think that's just something that has never changed in a 1,000 years. Well, I don't know. The Scottish Enlightenment was a good thing and we've kind of been a bit promiscuous with our ideas, haven't we? We get, And that's the great thing about ideas and building on great ideas is that the Founding Fathers robbed and borrowed from different things yes. that in the English Civil War and then in the French Revolution, all these things were fantastic contributions that now are being attacked yes. by this new elite, by people who say that we're all disgusting, they know best, and they come up with these really quite backward ideas about us. I think we should just laugh at them, criticise them and ridicule them. But why do they get into power? So you... So I look at your organisation, you were very against lockdowns and you were attempting to do things that would have helped young people and children not get locked up. I thought, by the way, the house arrest for teenagers was particularly cruel oh, and I've always said that, um, that when you ground a child for, like, a weekend, it's, like, the worst thing ever <laughs> for a 14-year-old. Yeah. But to put them under lock and key for 18 months, yeah. I think, is really dreadful. But your organisation was derided by the elite. I mean, you're one of... Or you were, at one point, one of the most hated people in the country for that group of people. Not for everyone, it's fair to say. <laughs> no. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I, hate you, I think, No, but I think the thing is that... Um, I think there's a gap here, isn't there? There's a gap between an elite who is no longer connected to ordinary people. They just think that everyone is toxic and disgusting. When we ask questions, when we've got opinions, they assume the worst about us all. But actually, the great British public, if you talk to people up and down the street and we're at together, we're always doing events around the country. We've got a couple coming up in Glasgow and Aberdeen soon in Scotland. Uh, we are always out on the street working with people. And the reality is that most people that are ordinary don't buy all this stuff, right? They don't, they don't buy the smears, they don't buy all these things. You know, remember, we all know that Britain 
fought against the Nazis. The idea that people are all far right because they've got questions mm, or yeah. differences is a disgusting smear and it's falling short on everyone and don't now. don't forget, Meghan and Harry were very pro -vac all, all of the um, compulsory, Vaccines compulsory and vaccinations and lockdowns. They were all masked up even when they didn't need to be. They did big conferences and seminars saying that we should have more lockdowns. You know, these people, the queues that people like me and you, all of us, have been far right. They're the ones who, you know, the most authoritarian. I always. mean, she was, they were, Harry and Meghan, whatever way you look at it, were extremists when it came to lockdown. Exactly. They were. Absolutely they extremists. And I don't think Meghan really likes the British anymore. No. And, and that's if the, ever. Well, she I was think hoping. It, it, was a, it was a stepping stone to where she wanted to get to. Yeah. It's as simple as that. But I mean, the other thing is about the lockdown thing is like everything is that we should put the public, there we go. <laughs> it might be them on the phone now. We should put the public at the heart of things, right? It should be the case, and this is difficult for people to deal with, but, but the public should be able to be engaged and, and have our voices heard. Many are trying to suffocate that, and actually, a lot of them are cynical and dispirited. But they're doing it for profit. This is what upsets yeah. me. The, Meghan Markle, whatever you think about this woman, she's come in, she's doing... She's, you know, she's pulled a ginger, apparently because she finds him attractive, OK, <laughs> but uh, he's also incredibly <laughs> wealthy and a duke. Um, I think that she's doing all this for the money. I can't prove that. I don't know the woman. But then when she besmirches or tries to besmirch an entire nation, you say, well, you're doing that for the money as well. It's despicable. Yeah. Absolutely right. And th th my point of view, you asked me the question about Meghan, and frankly, a good riddance to them, all, both of them. They've yeah. done their thing, they've written what they've said uh, and, 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 and what they're doing to the actual... For, for really, the royal family is disgusting. Why do you think Meghan hates the British? Well, I, I think it's simply because the British hate her, and that's what's happened. She thought she could actually lord all over everyone in, mm. in, in, in good old blighty, and what she's realised is that we're not all suckers. No. Great. OK, but one of us... Definitely is. OK, um, Meghan Markle, she's married to him. Meghan Markle is launching a new shop. Is it true or is it false? True. It's absolutely true! <laughs> OK, so to Alan. The Victoria and Albert Museum has been criticised for labelling Margaret Thatcher as a villain alongside Osama bin Laden and Adolf Hitler. Is it true or is it false? It, it's true and it's remarkably unbelievable that you could say many things about Margaret Thatcher. For some people, she was a great inspiration, uh, had some of those kind of uh, very deep, uh, new type of conservative values at the time was like with the Adam Smith uh, ideas of uh, the economy to, to be stoic and strong and people could buy their council homes. She had a whole outlook. Now, you may or may not have agreed with her. Many people might have robustly disagreed with her. At the time, I didn't agree with her. I was very young. Um, but the point is, she made a remarkable contribution. She stuck by her guns. She was a great leader in many ways. And uh, she was a product of the times that fought and argued the case. And women could look up to, men could mm. look up to. And people around the world respected her and admired her enormously. For an institution <laughs> now, to deem her as a villain alongside those other reprehensible um, people is just beyond, beyond contempt. The thing is, we've got institutions that have been captured by a new yeah. elite, <clears throat> a new elite that dare not speak its name, that have uh, things like DEI um, I and will. ESG. I will. Neo-Marxists. Right Yay! there. And, <laughs> well and, done, Lois. Thank you. And they're just basically, they've got an ideological agenda. We see it in museums, but it's across all our institutions mm. in the public and private sector. And the sooner this becomes clear with the public and we assert ourselves and say, we're not happy with that, the quicker that can go. It's reprehensible and it's wrong. We're, but, we're, but we're being governed by all these quangos and executive agencies, and that really worries me that whatever way... What, whatever your, your opinions are about what should happen in the country, the same blur out people are always in charge. Mm. Absolutely right. And I've got to put my case here. I'm 70 years this year. I grew up with... Well her. done. Yeah, thank you. Hey! Hey! You've all can done you very well. <laughs> 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 but 70 years, uh, you know, I've been on this planet, and that's right. I am a Thatcherite through... Were you at the time? Yes, I was. I mean, I, let's face it. She she brought us out of three-day weeks, all the problems with the, actually, the minor situations. She took on the unions and won, all those sorts of things. We were an absolute basket case, I'm telling you. You, you didn't get a, you, 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 your, your refuse bin emptied for about three months. That's the sort of thing we were... Uh, she was brilliant and I get... It's the ghost of Margaret Thatcher! Hey! She said, she said, she's saying this and I'll try and repeat it. Howard, thank you. Thank you <laughs> for supporting us in the 80s. Thank you. I love you, Megan. <laughs> oh, she loves you too. Also, she says, if you want any proof that the Conservative government in the 1980s was right, then just look at BR Coffee then.
and, and coffee now on the railways. It was a joke. <laughs> oh, British Being Rail catering. Yes. Was, British Rail catering was just an open joke. But you yeah. remember, there's a certain person called Arthur Scargill. You may have remembered him. Yes. That sort of thing. And he ruled the roost. He ruled the Labour Party. They used to pop into number 10 down the street. Sandwiches, all the other bits and pieces. What do you want? Let's really Beer screw... and sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, class. British Rail coffee maybe as well. But <laughs> honestly, I grew up in that time. I'm proud. Proud of Maggie Thatcher, and I'm insulted by this. What's the Victoria? Okay, now as everybody knows, for legal reasons, I'm required to have this idiot sat next to me. Uh, he's our head of diversity, dressed up as a rabbit. Who, who could even imagine it? It is the woke rabbit. Hey! <laughs> Thank you. Right, what have you got to say about Margaret Thatcher? Make it quick. Margaret Thatcher is to Britain what the plague is to everything else. Right, OK, so... Um, <laughs> That's nice and nuanced, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually. <laughs> she's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. I also, he always used to make me laugh the, the problem is the with pro the Mockney accent. The Tonys are disgusting. <laughs> They're disgusting. <laughs> the problem is, look, I, I don't actually like Margaret Thatcher because obviously she's an evil Tory, but if she was trans, I think she'd have made more correct decisions. <laughs> right. OK, and the fact that the Carlton Club didn't classify her as a woman, did they? They said no women could join the club, but the president is a non-gender position. Anyway, won't we'll rabbit bugger off. We're not interested in She was the Iron Maiden. The Iron Remember Maiden. Maiden. OK. The Iron Lady? No, I said the Maiden. Oh, the Iron what? Maiden. She was first called the, that. The thing is... As was she? The, the Russians called her that. Oh, did they? Yeah. But the thing is, I, you know, I completely agree with what you said, Alan, but... She, whatever people think of her, and I was brought up to hate her, actually, um, <laughs> she was democratically elected. She was not Hitler. She was not a fascist yeah, dictator. That's right. She was not, you know, somebody Osama that... Osama bin Laden that, 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 uh, you know, burnt Jews in ovens. She was a democratically elected prime minister. So for them to put her in, a, in an evil hall of fame is absolutely disgusting. And shame on her. Is it Trist Tristan Hunt, who's the head well, of the VNA? I think yeah. so, yeah. It, for him to do it is Which, reprehensible. It really is. He should be sacked. Well, he's a, he's, I mean, he's a former MP, so it just shows you the politicisation. But anyway, Alan, we must move on. Uh, the, Victorian Albert, the Victorian Albert Museum, have they labelled Margaret Thatcher a villain assault, alongside Osama Bin Laden and Adolf Hitler? Is it true or is it false? It's true. It's absolutely true! God. Stop clapping, woke rabbit. <laughs> OK, Lois. Yes. Lloyds Bank has told staff to stop using words widow despite owning Scottish widows. <laughs> is it true or is it false? Now, originally, when I thought about this question, I thought, oh, it must be to do with gender-specific uh, gender, gender language. But then I thought, well, hang on a minute. The word widow can be used for a man or a woman, so I'm not quite sure where they're going Aren't you a widower? Widower, yeah. Wokery gone mad again. And, you know, like taking the words mother out of hospitals, uh, you know, chest feeding, all of that I, jazz I find, is I have horrific. to say... I have to say, I find chest feeding revolting. I really do. Just the thought, the way, the way, the, uh, just the terminology. I also it. think it's fetish. Just going off the subject, very, very slightly. Absolutely. Um, you know, seeing men that are, you know, lactating with babies and saying that they get, up, they enjoy it. I, I think that it's it, it is wrong, actually a sexual. Have you got a sick bucket somewhere? Yeah, yeah. no, it's absolutely disgusting. But yeah. look, all this politically correct language, Alan. I mean. Some of it is just polite, though, isn't it? Because, I mean, we don't call people the things that we might have called them in the 1970s and 80s. Maybe that's a good thing. Well, there's a difference. So if you get to an Orwellian uh, kind of... Like the sort of thing you might have seen of Eastern Europe in the 70s and before, where you're not allowed to say... In fact, you actually invert the meaning of something. That's a destruction of everything we hold true. Can I just stop a you universal... for a No, no, I'm just going to stop you. Howard's brought his phone charger. I did. How, I, why, I, what are you doing? Because like, it, he, he's enjoying the show so, so much. much. Charging his phone. I do apologise, Andre, but unfortunately it was, it was dying. So yeah. I had to right, do that. Woke rabbit, charge the phone. You've got to confiscate this phone. Take the phone off it no. and the charger. <laughs> Take the phone and the charger. Right. I'm what, sorry, yeah. Howard, oh, you've he's got, got a my, problem. He's got my best <laughs> phone as well. Oh, wait, wrong, wrong one. Sorry. OK, so all the confiscated phones <laughs> can stay there. Right. Howard, I'm, I, you know, just stop now. I'm, like, I'm very sorry. That's all right. That's all right. It's all good. What, it's you're a, getting like, used it's to this a phone and a phone. I like yeah, it. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Kind, of, kind of enjoyable chaos. The thing is, when you're not allowed to say certain things, that is a destruction. I can't of believe our, you just kept going. That's a destruction <laughs> of our humanity, right? It is. It's an, it's an idea that somehow you can't call a thing what you know it is. Yeah. And the idea that everyone goes along with it. So it's, be, it's worse than the Emperor's New Clothes, right? It's this sense that people are being terrified into silence and being chilled. It's unacceptable. And the more... This is the good thing, though, that's happened. The more the great British public 
are brought into these discussions and they see what's going on with DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, yeah, yeah. with ESG in the corporate world and in the public sphere, the more we get to see that, people go, you what? <laughs> then that's where you get a what reality they do, check. Alan? They what get a reality check. What? Exactly. You what? They say it three you times. What? You what? There we you go. What? We you lined what? up that one. You heard. You heard. You know you bloody heard. <laughs> <laughs> and so we've got that situation where the public is the great arbiter of reality checks. And the more that we can say that's nonsense or you what, and put <laughs> pressure on this corrupt, decadent elite, these technocrats that are trying to like impose these measures. You know what they never want to do? They never want to have the argument they never want to, debate to convince no. people of the merit or the virtues of their arguments. They Absolutely. want to impose... We live in a world, we live in a world of, oh, you can't say that. Yeah. Anyway, Lois, yes. uh, time's up, so let's go to your question. Uh, Lloyds Bank, have they banned the word widow even though they own Scottish widows? You, is it true or is it false? You what? <laughs> you what? You what? You what? You, you what? what? It's true. Uh, it's very sad. Unfortunately, true. Oh. 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 Howard, he is actually charging your phone, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he was having a problem with the knobs, though. Yeah, yeah. he was struggling to stick it in. OK. <laughs> but, his phone's on 98%. What? <laughs> why do you need to charge it? He was just born. But this is, <laughs> I, I, I this is why, why, this is why, <laughs> this is why we're facing an eco-catastrophe. Because of you. Because <laughs> yeah. of you! When, when I put it on an hour ago, it was on 13. So, so can I just ask you? <laughs> so wait, hang on, hang on. It charged, it charged, it charged over an hour, and then it was fully charged, and now you're on charging it again. What did he say? <laughs> what he said, what he said was, what he said it's was, he feels, hostage. he feels that what you're doing to fuel is unfair because you're charging your phone when it doesn't need to be charged. Oh, no, I think we You're should, a disgrace, I'm a great, Howard believer, I'm a great believer in overcharging everything. Yeah. <laughs> Including on fuel. You got it in one. In one. That was The Woke That Was continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. OK, Howard, the Labour Party has announced plans to set up membership stalls at all major dinghy landing sites across the UK. <laughs> is it true or is it false? I don't know anything about this story, so I'm going to have to wing it. And I... Well, say it again. Okay. Membership <laughs> stalls. Yeah, so do you, if you want to join the Labour Party, they're going to go to places in Kent where the illegal migrants come over and you can immediately <laughs> sign up for your asylum to say you're a modern slave and Labour Party <laughs> membership all on the same platform. Well, I think that's a very enterprising that's approach. That's a disruptive technology. No, I, I think the Labour Party are very good at this. I mean, they're clever. I think it's a very intuitive and clever, constructive approach to actually getting rid of the, uh, the immigrants, isn't it? Oh, oh, oh I'm not sure getting rid of... No, what, oh, giving them signing asylum. Them up. No, signing sign them, them up as Labour Party membership. members. Surely they don't need to do that, Andre. They've probably been registered for postal votes before they got on the dinghy. <laughs> Indeed. All right, look, we're going to move on because there's almost nothing we can say about this. <laughs> 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 Howard, Howard, the Labour Party, has it announced plans to set up membership stalls for illegal migrants? Is it true or is it false? It's false. It's absolutely false! <laughs> Alan... Albanian gangs have launched an £18,000 women and children only smuggling service to reunite them with illegal immigrants already in the UK. Is it true oh or is it God. false? Yeah, it's true. Have you got any more to say about <laughs> it? It's going to be a very short <laughs> that's show. That's what we'll say at the end. <laughs> oh, right. Here we go. I'm, I'm, um, yeah, I've got time linear um, challenges. So, uh, yeah, I think that um, what's happened is. Uh, there we go. Look. Got a call from the guy. Don't worry, we'll get it. We'll get him there in the end. We'll get him there in the end. It's all right. Yeah. So that was Derek Lord. He said. Uh, he said you need to move a bit faster. Okay. Um, <laughs> look, Just rabbit. He's charged up. He's all good. Um, I think it's true, and I think the the thing is that's very concerning about it is that we've got a situation where you know. Look, let's look what's happened. I, as it happens, think that immigration generally can be a very good thing, positive thing for society, if it's done in a way that we have some control over it and we manage it. What we've seen is very particular groups and very particular areas and that not having control, not in the home office, not in the borders, not with our institutions. And this whole idea that you just deal with the gangs, for both parties, actually, you know, Conservatives and Labour, is a bit of a joke. But what I don't understand, Lois, is mm. the way that we're attempting to control immigration by dealing with it when people are here. What <laughs> yeah. you used to do, traditionally, was yeah. you'd have a border guard who'd turn your back. 
Yeah, but we've got this bizarre situation where we've outsourced guarding our board and our coastline to Serco, who also <laughs> but provide the dinghies, provide the accommodation, and provide and, and organise the benefits and everything. I, I don't think they get. I don't think they give them the dinghies. No, 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 no. I saw a story recently that inadvertently that there's some way that the taxpayer is funding the dinghies. But anyway, that's another yeah, that's thing. That's probably right, actually. But, but this is the thing. I am convinced, I don't know for definite, but I've heard it from various sources that there's some very big level deals going on with the civil service, with the government and with big corporates who need workers. They need them because we're not bringing them in from the EU. Oh, well, there's no, there's no doubt about it. I spoke yeah. to the man who employed more migrants than anyone else in Britain and he um, has now changed his mind about what he was doing. His name is Philip Ullman. Mm. And he said that the big problem you've got now is... You're bringing people into the country in order to get deliveries done for yeah. free or for a pound a time or whatever. Yeah. But what you pay in benefits to these people makes the cost absolutely enormous. Well, the other thing is the whole idea of British productivity and the idea that we can grow and have wealth creation for everyone has been completely not dis debunked. It's like not happening. And what instead people have done is gone, let's get loads of cheap labour over here. So yes. it's an insult to workers here. It's a lack of training, a lack of investment. A lack and actually, ironically, creates a problem for those people as we keep being minded, right? Oh, it yeah, having to share beds. Well, so, not only so that. daytime there, people, nighttime people. There is a thing, right, where, look, I have some sympathy if you're coming from various regions, whether it's economic or not. I have some sympathy, and it is life-threatening and it's perilous. But the point is, I do believe that people should have development in their but own countries. they're coming countries. from France, Alan. Well, they're coming from France. How did they get to France? If you look at, like, around the coast of Italy and elsewhere, if you look at if you look at interventions in the Middle East and the Maghreb, there are reasons why some of these things are happening. Howard, it's Howard, entirely Howard, economic. Howard, he's a bit more left-wing than you expected, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> So I didn't expect that at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, but I think the thing but is... Actually, but actually, in, Alan, the end, whatever in, response, think... in response, what I would say to you is this. The solution to the problems in Syria can't be for every military-aged oh. man in Syria to, to move delivery. to London. They can't. And yeah. absolutely, and that's why you need to have... And this is the problem with what's happened. It's a bit of broken Britain. I don't like talking Britain down, but I think that our institutions need to get handled. Now, we've got a thing that even if you're voted in democratically, you've got a civil service that doesn't let you do what you, what you have been elected to do. Yes. In fact, it campaigns against you yes. and prevents you from doing it. This is an irony. It's anti-democratic. And once again, right, there's a lot of people who are disillusioned and cynical about politics. We need to get people involved and engaged so, to put pressure to get it changed. So Howard, Howard, can I ask you this question? Is what's going to happen, and this is my guess, that what will happen is first the military-aged men come over, they, they're going because they can get the jobs, actually. It's not because they're military-aged. The young men, they're getting the jobs. Young, in. fit men. Exactly right. So then what happens is that their wives and children come later because then what they can do is sue the government for the right to family life. Yes. Well, abs absolutely right. And I, your po point about the young, fit men, I walk my dog on Camber Sands, and I regularly do that. I think people like Nigel Farage are regularly, regularly down there. And I walk my dog, and in comes the dinghies. I don't spot any old-age pensioners. I don't spot no. any young kids, anything like that sort of thing. And that's where I, and I'm... And you see them a lot? Oh, yeah. So, so, so how, like, how many have you seen this year, as an example, uh, well, in terms of people? Dinghies I'm not bothered about. I would say I've seen about 200. 200? Yeah. And that's just you walking your dog well, for my, how long my, every day? Uh, I, for an hour, we walk up and down the beach and Whoa. that sort of thing. Well, I and know. It's, 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 it's about, about 20 four. times I've seen that. So it's, about... so, 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 so it's 10 to a boat, 20 boats, 200 well, people. Well, that sort of bit. But, but you're, but you are some talking... of them have about 30 in a boat. Yeah. But you're talking about going for one hour a day on one stretch of one beach. <laughs> yeah. yeah, imagine. It's a popular manner. But it's 45,000 <laughs> 45, uh, illegal uh, immigrants every year that's coming in. Obviously, 700,000 for the last two years, 1.4 million. Um, that is an enormous amount. And there are... Look, America is an example of how you can have migration in a very interesting way, but you need to have integration. You need yeah. to have people who believe in values. You need to have uh, institutions that yeah. uphold them and people agreeing to that but, culturally but, but, and economically. But, but let me ask you this, Lois. Yes. Isn't it basically true that, that we live in a country where they don't want you to integrate? The number of times that I've seen, if you describe... Um, if, you want, if your neighbour wants you to integrate into Britain, your neighbours are racist, really. Oh, and what, absolutely. what should happen is... I mean, we had government documents translated into Urdu, Hindi, Albanian, whatever, rather than... And when Lord Greenalge, as he was Councillor Stephen Greenalge, proposed to stop doing that and teach people how to speak English, he was accused of being a racist. They don't want those people to integrate because they want to keep them on a low level so they'll continue to live in horrific conditions and take very minimum wages. And the reason that they want that to happen is because, like when we had all the people coming over from the EU who would work for very little yeah. and live lots to a room, lower middle-class people were able to pretend they were upper-class 
uh, mid middle class people. They were able to have cleaners and housekeepers, mm -hmm. and have f uh, now we've got the same situation because these people will work for basically nothing. You've got people who can have deliveries, have this, have that. They wouldn't be able to afford that if they were having to pay a minimum wage to an English person. So this is about people, uh, English people, pretending to be a, and, or being able. But, 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 but we're paying for all of it through our tax system, though. Yeah, but anyway, we have got to move on. Yeah. Um, and this is to Alan. Have Albanian gangs launched a new service where you can bring your wife and child with you, having already come over illegally? Yes. Is it true or is it <laughs> false? True. It's absolutely true! <laughs> Lois. Yes. According to a new study, woke people are more likely to be unhappy, anxious and depressed. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> God, yeah. Is it true I, or is it false? Well, to do an Alan, yeah, it's true. But no, <laughs> no, but you know, just seriously, the whole thing about being woke is about grievance culture because what they want is people that actually haven't really got that much to moan about because most woke people actually, you know, they're not in poverty, uh, so they haven't got real things to worry about. So you have to convince them that they're, they're angry about this or they can be angry on behalf of somebody else or they're oppressed or they've got something wrong with them or convince them that they've got mental health conditions and everything. So I would say that to be awoke is that you've been in some way indoctrinated with anxiety and depression when actually you've got no reason to be in the first place. What's going on with that rabbit? Yeah, what you've done is, <laughs> unfortunately, you've triggered it. It's a oh, triggered. No. I'm Comfort. triggered. Are you uh, unhappy, anxious and depressed? Of course, I live in a capitalist hellhole. And right. I got and I got misgendered the other day. Uh, what gender are you? Non-binary. Hey! Hey! <laughs> so look, on the serious <laughs> note, and I can't believe I'm talking to a I, I can't believe I'm talking to a, a mulleted child dressed as a rabbit. <laughs> but okay. Why should people be woke then if it makes them unhappy? Uh, because it brings about the socialist revolution. And you want a socialist revolution, do you? Of course, of course. Why do you want a socialist revolution? I, th I always say, socialism only killed 100 million people. Let's have another go. <laughs> yeah, why not? If it means Britain stops existing, then great. OK, well, there we have it. But can I just ask you, what is woke? Give me a definition. All of us here, what does woke mean? I, I personally think uh, it's people who are obsessed with a grievance, grievance culture. Are you yeah. in order to hang on, hang on. You're mansplaining what woke is. OK. Hang on, how can you mansplain to a man? No, it's mansplaining to him, it's a bunny. Oh, oh it's a bunny, oh, no. sorry. Woke, woke <laughs> is the socialist idea of redistribution based on class, but expanded to race, gender, sexuality, transgenderness, whatever Transgender else. Transgender status. Yes. Status. Yeah. status! Sorry, sorry. Status! I, I miss, status. I miss, status. So, so, can I ask so you a question? So this is in the BBC charter, then? <laughs> so it's the opposite of meritocracy, is what exactly. you're saying. Yeah, exactly. It's great. Oh, that's great. Yeah, keep going with that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's really good though. So, so Lois, do we think that if you thought all those things, you'd be unhappy, anxious, and depressed? Is it true or is it false? Yeah, well, you know, it's got to be true, hasn't it? I'd rather be you, Lois. So that has got to be true. <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> oh, we have way more fun. Okay, so to Howard. Rishi Sunak's premiership is under threat from Tory MPs who want to replace him with Penny Mordens. Is it true or is it <laughs> false? I've got to tell you something. I was with the journalist who made this story up the other day, so I'm going to say that whatever it says on here, Mordens not to blame. Well, Howard knows Penny really well. Well, Penny is a very dear friend of mine. And she hasn't done anything wrong. And for 15 years, but she hasn't denied it. No, that's her problem. She hasn't come out straight away and said it, it's a load of old tosh. I mean, she's been asked uh, by several people who I know quite senior to say, Penny, why are you not saying anything? And she's, she's basically keeping quiet. Even that whole Bill thing. Gates rung her and said, Look, when, you're writing, when you write your next book, I'll do the foreword again. Is it true, Penny? She didn't so even what, return So, what you're saying? So, so, so I, say, <laughs> I say, and I can't declare my source, but I say that I met the person who made this story up yeah. and gave it to all the press. Mm. You're saying that you believe the story's made up because the people that are officially supporting Mordens could not possibly Support be supporting her. Well, absolutely. If you want to have a, a Conservative or someone who has right-wing Conservative values leading the Conservative Party, it is not Penny Mordaunt. I mean, she's got the sword and everything. Well, it's not Penny Mordaunt either, is it? Yeah, no, it's <laughs> Penny Mordaunt yeah, or Mordaunt. Or Mordaunt. Anyway, no, she's not a Conservative and she shouldn't be Conservative. But, but there was a bit a bit, uh, bit Baudisier about her with the... Well, she didn't have a shield, she had no, the sword, sword, but there was something a bit... A bit, you know, but legal you, about it. You've seen it. her performance at the dispatch box, how she actually demolishes the SNP. Mm. That's pretty impressive what she does. She is better than what we've got now. I'd rather have her than anything else. Well, Oh, anything. really? That's You'd rather have her than anything else? Oh, no. No, sorry, no. Sorry. Stop. <laughs> Can she Stop. leave the room? Stop. Lois, you got banned from Smuts two weeks sorry, ago. I did. Sorry, I'm We're sorry. We're not going back to it.
with all going back Sorry. to old Alan's walked but into Alan, this. But Alan, <laughs> on a serious note, what worries me about Westminster is that there's nobody good there at all. I mean, I don't feel like I look at any of these leaders and say, he'd be brilliant, she'd be brilliant, no. they'd be brilliant. Yeah, absolutely well, right. Charles Walker made the point about there's a low character at the moment. I don't think it's true that there's no one that's of got value. I think the problem is there's a culture, and it's been here for the last three decades, of technocrats and bureaucrats. So from uh, Tony Blair, really on to Cameron and throughout, we've seen a lot of people that have fit into this idea that they all look, they sound similar, they do the similar thing. It's why Keir Starmer said he'd rather be at Davos than Westminster, yeah, the hullabaloo, yeah, the democratic area. They're not representative of that because they've become estranged from the public. The moment that happened with Brexit, which forced a public big demo discussion about democracy up and down the country, was a moment, it was a flashpoint, and that quickly got suffocated subsequently. Mm. And that's what the problem is, right? There's a lot of people that are not used to being accountable directly mm. and being under pressure, which is why when we're campaigning and we're doing things and you get, you get to see action and change happen, right? Because these elected representatives, a lot of the time, are actually separated from the public and we need the public, everyone, to get much more involved. What I, but what I saw with Davos um, genuinely is this, and why someone like Keir Starmer likes it. The idea is that he's, he's, he's a representative, he's, he's not a delegate, right? So basically, he represents Davos in the United Kingdom. He's not a delegate yeah. for the people of his constituency yeah. to Westminster. It's and I used to, when I was in politics, I used to see it time and time again, mm. where people would see it as their role to explain to the, audience, the public why things were happening, rather than explain make Explain to decisions. the little people, you mean? Rather than make a real difference. Yeah. I yeah. think Jacob Rees-Mogg could be good. I was at the PopCon event quite recently, and, um, and he spoke very eloquently and he really connected with everybody that I mean he would, wouldn't he? But yeah. but I think that Jacob is a contender, I really do. It's Jacob Rees Mogg! Oh, Jacob! He says, unfortunately, he's unwilling to admit it's really him on the phone because he's contracted to another place. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jacob. <laughs> Making money. Okay, so um, do we think that uh, <laughs> Richie Sunak's pre the problem is, Howard, <laughs> what, what what do you want us to do? Do you want us to go by what's on the form? Or do you want us to go by what I personally think? Let's go by what I personally think. I actually think I will um, cow to your opinion. OK, so what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say that Rishi Sunak's premiership is under threat by Penny M Mordaunt. M Mordaunt. You've got me <laughs> doing it now! Penny Mordaunt. Penny Mordaunt, right. OK, Rishi Sunak's premiership is under threat from Tory MPs who want to replace him with Penny Mordaunt. This says true, you say... True. It's absolutely false! Exactly. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that was The Woke That Was continues after the break. Well, this guy wasn't elected in a general election when he first came in as Prime Minister. He's just like Rishi Sunak, but there isn't a war at the moment. So I've been out and about in Westminster asking people if there should be a general election right now. Should there be a general election? what we've got we have to live with. But we elected Boris, then no. Liz came in and then Grishy no, came in. No, well, you've, yeah, but Boris, but it doesn't mean to say he's going to be there five years. He could have died or he could have been ill. But he was ill, wasn't he? But he didn't die. No, I mean, he politically he died. Are you a bit annoyed that uh, we've got an unelected Prime Minister? Very. Very annoyed. Not happy at all. Which way would you vote if there was an election? The Christian People's Alliance Party, whose rosette I'm wearing and of which I'm a member, and I did stand for them at the local elections in South Hertfordshire. I know um, Christian People's Alliance, they are Christian kind of, but the nation has gone woke. So if you mention Jesus, they'll call you something else, they'll call you bigot. Every, anything, truth, people don't want the truth, is they like a lie. They like different narratives. Christian People's Alliance are the ones. Should there be a general election? Any time you like, yep. And will Labour win it? By a street. And is it good that, we're having, that we have an unelected government? Well, we don't have an unelected government. We have an unelected Prime Minister, don't we? A successive, uh, succession of them. Uh, so that's not good, no. I mean, the big advantage of Rishi Sunak being Prime Minister is that he won't conspire to bring down the government anymore. No, well, the, the rest of his colleagues will conspire to do that anyway. He doesn't need to. They'll do it for him. Are the Conservatives now just a shambles? They're complete shambles, and, uh, of course, it's a country that's suffering as a result of it. Uh, good to see you, yeah. I'm no, listen. really following you, Nigel and uh, Richard and all the rest. Listen, listen, <laughs> should there be a general going. election? Yes. Uh, why ah, 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 ah. Well, it's a trick question, isn't it? Should there be a general election? Yes. Why? Just because people are not happy and... Yes, I do believe. It just feels sometimes that the government isn't listening to us at all. So are you just wasting your time standing here? 
No, um, I do agree. I think we've got a set of politicians who are answerable only to the elites. They're not listening to us. Frankly, I don't think they care very much about us. Unless I think we do activate ourselves, I think then they'll listen because they don't have control anymore. Why should there be a general election? Because we've got an unelected prime minister. So what would general election do? What, will I, what benefit would it be? Well, it would potentially bring in a, a new set of politicians who might be better. How do you know they might be better? I've, I don't. Well, they may not be better, they may be worse. But so we're from frying pan to fire. These people are intangible, aren't they? Yeah, they? They have no sort of backbone. They don't command any sort of respect or loyalty or anything. You know, you want somebody who's strong, a sort of, shouldn't say it, but a sort of Thatcherite type of figure. <laughs> there we go, we've got, to, we've got to give him a kiss. <laughs> oh. There we go. <laughs> Frankly, the political class that we have ended up with don't represent us. They don't act for us. They really, truly act for a, a higher group of elites, is what I think. Um, We've, but the answer, I think you were saying, is there any point of this? I think I've been over that in my mind. I think there is. We've got to activate ourselves because I think the one thing these elitists don't like or they can't handle is when people like us start going out on the streets. Which way would you vote if there was a general election? Not Tory. <laughs> Anyone but the Tories? Yes. <laughs> what about Nigel Farage? No. What about Keir Starmer? No. What about the Liberal Democrat bloke, whoever it is this week? Well, it's a bit, I'm a bit rude to not say his name. He said no to Farage, but he doesn't say Liberal Democrat. That's a bit unfair. <laughs> Come on, where's your empire? I can't, I can't remember his name right well, now. It's, it's Sir, Sir somebody Come or other. On, you're the one reporting. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. Right, we're going to cut this. Can't do this anymore. I can't remember the Liberal Democrat leader's no, no, name. No, no. <laughs> I've, been, I've been defeated by a bald man in a backpack who was only here to, uh, to, to show his daughters round Westminster. What a disaster. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. OK, Alan, the government... I love the way we're just making it up yeah, as we go along. Isn't that what it's about? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, to Alan, the government has declared white, working-class football fans far-right terror groups. Is it true or is it false? Yeah, well, this is a terrible moment where you get a situation where when you can start applying this tag yeah. to everyone, uh, then very quickly you get into the kind of the enemy within. And the white working class in Britain has become... The only group, actually, that you're allowed to say despicable things about. Yes. Right, in yeah. this world uh, where everyone has to be held up and be seen as vulnerable and be taken note of, it's f open game on ordinary people that happen to be white. And if you look, actually, and this is not to patronise white working class people, but if you look at things like white working class men in particular and boys that are coming yeah. through school, there's a whole range of things where actually they're not achieving as much as many of their contemporaries and but peers. When, but when I was a kid, that wasn't even a category. No. You had middle class people, you had upper yeah, class exactly. people, you had working class yeah. people. This white working class, yeah. like, the white yeah. working class, it's yeah. like the worst thing that you've ever heard of. Yeah, exactly. And then Not only got... are they working class, but they're white oh, as exactly. well. Exactly. <laughs> and then, well, this, I, this whole thing about, this is the new racism, splitting yes. people up about, you know, their colour, their pigmentation. Mm. The great thing about the last 30 years is Britain transformed its relationship all that we made things better and everyone living together and then this become this obsession now the other thing is football right football is a great fantastic thing yeah. but the idea of this amorphous mob of people you can't trust is the idea of the public that somehow it's not our friends and neighbors and colleagues and loved ones that we all like really value but it's those people the nasty ones they're out of control they're dangerous actually I love them. I think the majority of British people love them. We saw it during the Olympics when everyone came out on the street. And football is so important for yeah. Britain and it's a disgusting idea. And the danger with this ever-increasing legislation, we've seen it around the government trying to stop Just Stop Oil and others, right? We know that the public's frustrated about it, but we had laws to stop all those things. The more you grant more laws, like the new extremism law, like the idea that you make new groups terror groups, it's despicable. Well, uh, Howard, I'm going to say this to you. There has always been provision in law for the Home Secretary to designate somebody as a prescribed group, a terrorist group, and they obviously... Then it becomes illegal to be a member of it. This new definition by Gove says, let's not interact with any far-right groups. Let's be honest, what he's really saying is this. For years and years and years, the British government hung around with Islamic fundamentalists. Yeah. But now what we have to do is make it illegal for us to do that, to stop our civil servants doing it. Oh, by the way, what we'll do is... 
will also include some far-right groups which we've never interacted with at all, no. just to pretend this isn't specifically an Islamophilia problem. Well, I thought when he came out to Sunak and stood outside of Number 10 and made that speech, saying about the, the whole thing because of what happened and what certain people have said about, uh, you know, Islamophobia and all this, the left... Uh, you know, I think it's it. Ninety percent of all those actually on the uh, terrorist uh, uh, register or something come from the left. Of course, they do, and, and that sort of thing. But I think I like to bring it back to the, the question is because I grew up in the, the thuggery days or, or, or in football. Again, I'm an old git, as you know. And there's a were, you, were you ever a thug? Yeah, no, no, I was never a thug. <laughs> I, I couldn't see no, it. No, but there was. I, we, they had this terrible thing in South East London. I'm a Crystal Palace fan. Mm. I'm sorry, but then then, then there's the Millwall fans. Oh, it's the Millwall fans. He said <laughs> we got. <laughs> Beating up loads of times by Aaron Cox. He was a real wrong in his day. Nasty piece of work he was. Nasty piece of work. What he could do with a shank and some claret was unbelievable. I, I, wasn't I don't a, even know what a I shank not, and claret is. I was is. not a skinhead, though. That's oh, OK. Why. <laughs> I can tell. You've still got a good head of hair for a 70-year-old. Not, not up there. There we go. It is a bit of a comb-over. OK. <laughs> no, that was Red Herring Road turning right onto White Elephant Way. OK, so, Alan, has the government declared white working-class football fans far-right terror groups? Is it true or is it false? Not all of them, but it is that runs the legislation runs the risk of making that happen. So, oh, oh so, oh, so are you, are you oh, on the fence of being nuanced and me are you saying, about it? Are you <laughs> saying that it's that it's false on the grounds that it's not happened yet? I'm saying it's false on the grounds that it's not for everyone generically, but that is a very big danger of it. True or false? Come on, true. No, or false. He's, he's, he's said that whilst there is a significant danger of this happening, it hasn't happened to the full extent yet. Therefore, it's false. He's right. It's false. Hey! Lois. Yes. Diane Abbott. Oh, no. Has refused to go to an anti Semitism course to rejoin Labour. Is it true or is it false? Well, of course she's refused to go because didn't you know that Jewish people don't ever experience racism, according to Diane and that's, Abbott? And that's a quote from her, isn't it? Yeah. It? So do you think that um, this is just another example of the left getting away with it? Because she's under investigation for racism and she hits back by besmirching somebody else and all of her sins are wiped away. Well, absolutely. And, you know, even the fact that she didn't get chosen in the chamber to speak, you know, you, it made people feel a little bit sorry for her. She's actually I didn't managed... get that, by the way. Did you, did you watch that? Yeah, the, Why didn't she, they call her? I, it, I think it's wrong. She should have, because it was about her. Yeah. And, and she wasn't allowed to. And she Lin, been, Lindsay Hall just ignored her. Well, she should I, have been called, but she's, a, she's been able quite cleverly to paint herself as the victim with this, whereas she's actually... Oh, that was perfect for her. It, it was actually perfect for her. You want to go down the, 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 the rabbit hole, well, you exactly. could say that it I mean, worked you, very are well you, for are her. You, are you, are you, basically, it's the allegation here that they just throw mud in order to protect their own people. Because I look at this, I think there are really serious questions about what Diane Abbott did. She lied when she put that newspaper column in that yeah. it had been yeah. edited later, and all this sort of shenanigans. She's refused to go on an anti-Semitism course, which rather gives away the answer to the question. Absolutely. But it's still an important point, because having done all of that, having been elected representative, the fact that some guy we've never heard of that gave money to the Tory party said something off colour about her is more important and she will now be venerated as a saint as a result. Well, absolutely. I mean, and also, I don't know if you know this about her, but she actually blocked one of the major uh, Jewish organisations in the UK, the National Jewish Assembly. We know them very well. Um, but she actually blocked them on Twitter. I mean, she, she is... She is I've, I've never raging... agreed with this. It blocking somebody on Twitter is a big offence. <laughs> well, you know, if they're criticising you for, for the comments that you've made, she, she's, man she's managed to turn it round. She's she has, she has she managed, has, to, turn managed to turn it round, Alan. Well, like, here's the thing, right? What he said... You could say a number of things about it. Two things. One, I think it was racist as it happens. The other thing is, he said some things. Now, you could contextualise them. She's saying that's incitement. It, I don't think it was no. incitement. No. Too, so that's the thing she's really weaponising. Mm -hmm. Now, now the discussion... But, but I get this all the time. Alan, I'm going to let you continue, but I get this all the time. Um, you know, I hate you, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to thump you in the street. People don't mean it. Mm. Right, you know, if I... If <laughs> we I, hope not. If I, if I say, oh, my God, I can't stand that person, they should be shot, yeah. that, to me, yeah. and I might be wrong, yeah. is a turn of phrase which means I don't like the person very much. You are not asking someone to shoot... Well, as, exactly. as, well, a, that... as a fossil fuel lover, I get it all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone's threatening me with my life. I get that sort of... But they don't well, do well, they're Sorry, also, That's all right, mate. And um, you... <laughs> <threaten your life. laughs> but that's the thing about, you know, that it, it, trying to turn it into an incitement thing is dangerous because that wasn't the context of it. Now... It's possible to have two things go on at the same time, right? Yeah. Not be binary. 
the things that were said about her, I consider them to be racist. Now, okay. you can say in the context, but then should the Conservatives give them money back? I'm not a big fan of the Conservatives getting money, but I don't think they have to give their money back. Equally, why is it that travellers and Jews allegedly don't experience racism from her point of view? Yeah. Or well, yeah. how can she say, don't be silly, Jewish people don't feel like they're scary zones on the weekend? How's she talking for all of them if she yeah. doesn't want people doing that about her? You can only talk about so, your own lived experience unless so it's Diane Abbott talking. This is the yeah. problem. I think one has to be consistent. I can yeah. see that she's had a lot of disgusting things said about her, and I've spent a lot of my younger years fighting racism, right? I'm opposed to it. I don't happen to think we've got a particularly racist country. Now, I think the new racist are the people, as we said before, the new woke people. Yeah, the, so, the good guys are now the racist. The yeah. Hashtag good be, guys. be kind. Be kind, yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. OK, so Woke Wabbit, who is our head of diversity, who I'm <laughs> legally required to have on, it's part of a contractual arrangement, after last time I caused trouble. Uh, Woke Wabbit, <laughs> tell us why Diane Abbott's marvellous and make it fast. Um, You don't know. OK, that's great. <laughs> that was good effort. You like Diane Abbott? Yeah, well, she's all right. <clears throat> but, but the problem is she's a member of the Labour Party. No, she's not. Well, she's, oh, yeah, no, she's, but she's not standing, she's an independent at the moment. No, she's... She's, she's a member of the Labour Party, but she's suspended as an MP from the whip. Yeah. Mm. Correct. That's right. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's Diane Abbott. <laughs> so Diane Abbott is talking through the woke rabbit's ears. Yes. Right. I was going to say you didn't do that. Good move. Well, good move. That was clever. How else are you meant to hold a phone? <laughs> yeah, OK. If you're, if you're a rabbit. So for those listening on radio, you've got the phone on the top of your head. That's what is Diane Abbott saying? Day. Well, she's just saying she should be the Prime Minister and Rishi Sunak is, is terrible. OK, great. Well, that was an insightful thought. I love the way the woke grab it almost put it to a human ear and then realised he was a rabbit. But That's like the time a couple of weeks ago when he forgot he was American. <laughs> Has she refused to go to anti-Semitism training? Is it true or is it false? It's very, very true. It's absolutely true! <laughs> OK, so what are the final scores, Woke Wabbit? Lois is on zero. Oh. Howard is on 100,000. <laughs> and Alan is on a billion. A hey! billion! Hey! Well, well done, well done, Alan. Alan. Alan Miller. Now what we've got to do, we've got to ask about what the prize is. The inaugural prize winner for the golden carrot is Alan. What is the golden carrot for? Is it because bunnies like rabbits and you've made that one of gold? Bunnies like rabbits. <laughs> Bunnies like carrots. <laughs> but you're not allowed to hit me. OK, so congratulations to Alan Miller. Yay! Thank you so much. Hello, Alan. Yay! I'm Howard Cox. Thank you very I'm much. off now to boil a golden <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> Bye. <Yay. laughs>